Hello everybody, always Dizzy here. Uh, I've been meaning to make this video for, for a while um, and I finally got to it. Basically, I'm making this video, which I guess is going to be addressed to the Lee Chess developers. Um, and it's really a, a list of requests and recommendations on things that could be improved to the site. Um, I appreciate all of the the volunteers that work on, on, on the site. And I'm sure that I'm not sure if I should adjust it to the developers directly, but I'll probably switch back and forth, but, um, I'm sure that the developers are very busy with a number of bugs and implementing new features and so forth. But nevertheless, I thought it would be useful to, um, voice my, my uh, opinion. Okay. So the first thing, uh, which personally I think uh, is the most important to me um, at, at this moment of time is when I play blindfold chess on Lee Chess, which for the most part works pretty well, um, I have a few issues that I think could be very easily, very easily improved. Um, so, you know, the first thing I do is I go to sound and I go to a speech. Um, so when the moves are played, I hear the speech back. Now, that works great, except um, on some of the moves, it's hard to to differentiate the the um, the letter sounds. Um, I am hard of hearing, which makes it even more difficult. But sometimes, like B, D, G, um, it, E, you know, it they they sound similar sometimes. Depend like the way that the the female uh, voice uh, says them. Um, and some of the numbers are kind of cut off sometimes, but often with the letters like B, D, G, it's, it's really, really hard to hear. So it would be nice if we had the option of choosing, uh, like maybe between two or three different voice sounds, not just the female one, but maybe a male one and, uh, maybe even a different region one, like British English or something like that. Um, or maybe even like a slower version of it. Like I'm probably asking for too much, but maybe if you just add in like one or two other speech voices as well. Um, the other thing is when I'm playing a game, like uh, I can't offer a draw. So when I'm playing blindfolded, I'm, I'm literally wearing a blindfold. I've got videos of it. I, I'm wearing a blindfold and then I'm just entering in the moves here and then I hear the, the move back. Um, but if my opponent offers me a draw, I never know about it. So that's, that's an issue. Now, I guess this whole blindfold thing is not, I mean, I'm using two different features in together to, to play blindfold. So I can understand why this wasn't thought of before. Um, it might actually be handy if there was even just, so I don't have to go in and toggle these options every time, like going to speech and uh, changing the, the sound to speech and then changing the, the keyboard input, maybe even just have a, like a low option or toggle that like blindfold mode, um, might be handy. Um, but yeah, as, as I was saying, like we, you can't offer a draw. So you, I don't know when somebody offers me a draw and similarly, I cannot offer a draw. Um, I've tried every command for that, but I cannot offer a draw, um, which is, which makes blindfold you know, it, it's, it's just unfortunate because when I want to do that, then I have to take off the blindfold and then type it in. I mean, uh, then manually hit it, but I don't even do that. Basically when I play blindfold, I just don't offer draws and I can't accept draws. Um, what else here? So I talked about that. Um, also it'd be nice if you could have a command to resign, not a big deal, but, um, it would be nice. I mean, if you have this keyboard input thing, it kind of makes sense to, to be able to, to, uh, resign as well. Um, and then actually the most important thing apart from the draw offer here is when my, like often my opponents will simply abandon the games because my blindfold skill is very low. Currently it's like 1200, um, classical, uh, 12, 12 or 1300 classical rating. And I play very slow time controls because I'm just really, really, really slow when I play blindfold. And so a lot of my opponents get bored 
and they just abandon the game. And I never know about it. I never know if they abandon. There will be a message here, right? Like, do you wish to claim a win, blah, blah, blah. But there's no, no notification. So if that could be added into the text-to-speech um, as well, that would be great so that, yeah, when they abandon the game, I will know. And because I've sat there for like 20 minutes before on several occasions. I've just sat there not knowing, you know, that my opponent has left. Okay. Boy, I've got a big list of things. Um, next up for puzzles. Um, so, yeah, one of them is I, I would like to have the ability to customize the, the display of the board as I can in a normal game. Um, so that means, okay. So for example, how can I do this? Um, so in the puzzle, so afterwards, when you are reviewing it, oh, maybe it works now. Oh no. Yeah. So, so these, this is what I'm talking about. So these arrows and all of these things that you can normally customize in a normal game display, you can't customize them in a, in a puzzle. So like you've got this, you, everything is here, all of the bells and whistles, which I find distracting. So when you're analyzing a game in a puzzle mode, I can't, I don't have that hamburger option, hamburger menu to, um, yeah, to disable the arrows and disable like this, I forget what this is called. Um, and all of that, all of that stuff. Um, I wonder if it even shows legal, okay, it doesn't do the legal moves, but it shows the arrows and so forth. And I just, it would be nice to have the option to turn those off. Um, and actually, before I forget, let me just turn off the keyboard input. Okay. So yeah, so that's, that's one thing. Um, the other thing was puzzles. No, that was, that was it for that. Oh yeah. So puzzle dashboard. Um, I would love the ability to increase the time range to over 90 days. Now I'm, I'm assuming you had to set some limit because of the constraints of the size of the database and so on, but the 90 days th thing is, it's, it's honestly, it's not super useful because you only, I mean, you're only going to do so many puzzles in that, in that, um, window and, um, the sample size is really not that fantastic. Um, so if we, if this could be increased, that would be great. Um, again, I don't know like how much, I mean, I, I'm assuming it probably takes up a fair bit of storage space on the server, but the longer, the longer, the better, right? Again, it's because 90 days is really too small of a sample. So I'm just repeating myself, but yeah, I mean, if we could do like six months, a year, that would be really good. Um, all time, like the longer, the better, um, because the more data that we can, uh, base that on the better. Okay. Next up. Uh, uh, but, but when playing a game, um, I would love to have the ability to hide the people watching you. So, okay. Well, let me just go to a random uh, game I played here. Okay. So yeah. So right here in the bottom left-hand corner, um, oftentimes I'll get people like, I'll, I'll appear on Lee Chess TV especially if I'm playing classical, because often I'm one of the highest rated games in classical because nobody plays classical. Um, I'll get like, you know, 20 or so people show up here and this changes too. So it'll be like people popping in and out and it's just distracting because when I'm, when I'm playing, um, I see here, like this is moving, like the text is even moving because people are, are joining and leaving the game and it's, it's very distracting. Um, cause nothing else moves other than the clock when you're playing, right? Everything is stationary, but then this in the corner of my eye is, yeah, is, is moving. It, it's, it may seem super minor, but it is distracting, very distracting. Um, so if, if, if basically if I could have like little buttons here that could be like hide, like a little eye, maybe a little uh, eye icon that can be like hide and show. Um, that would be great. Yeah. Um, okay. Moving on puzzle racer. Actually, I put this in a new window. So puzzle racer, this is fun. Um, 
but I would love the ability to race against more than just one friend. So here you can send a link, but you can only race against one other person. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Give us the ability to, to race against more than one person. I mean, I, I'm a streamer and it would be great to race my viewers. I mean, even if you had to limit it to like five or six players, I understand, but um, yeah, that would be a great addition. Um, also, I would love the ability to have the option of doing different lengths of, of races. So um, by default, I think it's, I think it's 90 seconds. Um, and it'd be good if you, if you could do like a, like a five minute race or a 10 minute race, um, because in my opinion, it ends up being really who's faster with the mouse, because I will do most of them within like on, on average, like, like, like two seconds, uh, right. Uh, probably a, maybe a one or two second average per per puzzle. And then at the end of the puzzle, like I, it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm still doing them so quickly and it just becomes who's faster with the most. And so they, there's not enough time in the race to get more difficult puzzles. Um, yeah. So if we could have the option of doing like a five minute mode, um, uh, maybe a 10 minute mode, that would be great. Um, also with puzzle racer, I would love the ability to see which ones you get wrong. Um, you can do that in the other modes, but not in Puzzle Racer. So, yeah, at the end of the puzzle, if you could if you could go back and see which ones you got wrong, that would be great. Um, next up is the the coaches section. So the coaches section, um, it's, I mean, it's great that we have this resource, but it's like I've gone through this many, many times myself, and it's it's very, very difficult to use um, from a functional standpoint, from a usability standpoint. Um, the like, so it, I, it, I, I think Lee Chess is in kind of a between a rock and a hard place here because ideally they would kind of make everybody enter in their information again um, to, or update their inform update their information so that. First of all, that there is a rate and maybe not everyone wants to publicly dis disclose their rate, but um, it's not like you, cause you can't filter by rate by, but, or even a rate range um, or sort by it. So you, what ends up happening is you have to manually go in, like you have to manually search and search and search. And there's like, a, there's like thousands of coaches here and you have to search and search and search and, and to find everybody's rates. Um, and a lot of them are different currencies. Some of them are hourly, some of them are for packages and you, you just have to do so much manual searching, um, instead of being able to filter, you can only filter by country and language. So, um, to be able to filter by, you know, by rating, by, by range, maybe even by time zone would be very useful. Um, and. Yeah. Also maybe, I mean, the other thing is a lot of this information becomes outdated. Like in the past I've contacted coaches and they're like, oh, I no longer offer coaching and, and so on. So I think this really needs an overhaul and a lot of people I think use this feature, but it, it really needs to be overhauled in my opinion. Um, another, okay. Another feature, a uh, feature request. It's, it's kind of a strange one a little bit, but. I would like to have the ability to watch lower rated games. Um, why? Well, partly for entertainment, but, um, and also partly just because sometimes, for example, for my YouTube channel, I, I might just want to look at, you know, some games and then analyze them for, for content for my YouTube video. But it's like, I, I, I have trouble finding these games. It sounds ridiculous, but it's true. I, I've looked for, yeah, for games before just to, to go over on my stream or on my YouTube video and I don't know how to find them. It sounds simple, but how do I do it? Every game on like the front page and everything, they're all high rated. Even the tournaments people are, you know, at a, at least an intermediate level for the most part. Um, so I can't go and like browse the lower rated games. 
Um, I, I can look at all the top games by going to players, you know, I can do it this way and then do it this way. Um, yeah, so I don't know how you would go about doing this. Like, I don't know, I don't know how you would do this. Maybe, no, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how, it, I don't know how it would be done. Maybe a feature that you can filter by rating and then view a list of those games. I'm not sure, but it would be nice because again, it's just, it's, it's currently almost impossible to, to, to look, to just watch lower rated games. Okay. Next up. Um, it would be great if you could filter and isolate your puzzle rating over time. Yeah. So what I mean by that, I believe is on the profile. Um, well, for, for, is this what I mean? Yeah. I'm not sure if this is what I mean, but I, I'll mention it anyway. It's like right now, currently for your puzzles, um, you only have this, it's only displays on your graph and you kind of have to like zoom in and, uh, look at the peak and then hover over it to see what your peak was. Um, I'm not sure if that's what I meant if I wanted like uh, a breakdown like this, but what I think I meant was, uh, maybe in the puzzle area, if you could filter by a certain difficulty level instead of, I know right now you can do easiest, easier, normal, harder, hardest, but there's a, I mean, yeah, that, that's nice, but it's also, these are big jumps. Like it would be nice to be able to, to do puzzles that are just 2,400 to 2,500 or, you know, 2,600 to 2,700 or whatever. Um, or even be able to do a lower range, uh, like, like 1,700 to 1,800, because maybe you want to work on your pattern recognition. Um, so that would be a nice little feature. Um, but as I, okay. Um, lastly, and again, like, I'm really nitpicking now, but it might be nice to have a few more, um, P sets and board themes. Like I'm really nitpicking here. I mean, you have, there, there's a good selection right now. It's not displaying on my stream because I think just the way that, oh no, it's because it's cut off on my stream. Um, and I'm too lazy to switch, you know, to edit that, but yeah, but right now, when you go to the themes, there's currently about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, I don't know, maybe 25. I mean, there's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot, but maybe if you could add in a few more themes, that might, might be nice. I'm really nitpicking here though. And, um, what was the other thing I had and P sets as well. Um, but I mean, yeah, that's not a big request. So that was, I, I kind of listed them in order of what I felt uh, like priority of what I would like to see done, but certainly with those, those blindfold options, I think that would really improve that functionality significantly as well as some of the, the puzzle based requests that I had, I think would, would be great. Other than that, it's hard to really find or to think of any, uh, improvements that I would like made to the site, um, which is, which is a good thing. Okay. Thanks for listening to me and watching this long video.